Hi, today we are going to be showing you how to perform your marinade experiment. For today's experiment, you are going to be using one London broil steak, as shown here. Um, this is beef, so you want to make sure that you are always paying attention to where this beef is laying, what surfaces it is touching, and you do not want to perform cross-contamination because if you do that with any type of beef, you are in severe danger of E. coli. Um, before I start to show you how to cut up this London broil steak today, I'm going to show you your first step. Your first step is to grab three Ziploc bags and label each. This is a very important step, so you want to pay attention. The first bag is labeled 24-hour marinade, your period and your bin number. Okay. The second one is a 30-minute marinade, your period and your bin number. And the third simply has just your period number and your bin number. Okay, I've cut my London broil steak in half, and I'm going to be showing you how to cube, cutting them into half-inch cubes with one half of my steak. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the bear claw method. Make sure that you are um, using both hands while cutting. I'm using my chef's knife. And my first step is to go ahead and um, cut this London broil steak into strips. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to line these strips up so that I can maintain that cube size. Remember, cubes, all six sides are exactly the same size. Um, keep, keep your strips together, and I'm going to go ahead and create my cubes. About a half of an inch thick. I have raw beef on my hands, so either A, your partner can go ahead and put this in the 24-hour marinade bag, or B, you can wash your hands first and then handle your baggie and put this into your 24-hour marinade. Okay, I have cubed my other half of the steak at about a half of an inch thickness. I have one bag labeled 24-hour marinade with half of my steak, one bag labeled 30-minute marinade with half of my steak, and the third bag has nothing in it yet. Okay, it's time to make our marinade for our meat marinade experiment. Um, into this mixing bowl, I have put one-fourth of a cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, a fourth of a teaspoon of dried oregano, a fourth of a teaspoon of ground cumin, and one tablespoon of brown sugar. And I'm kind of ready to move on here. So um, the next step calls for one full teaspoon, I'm sorry, a half of a teaspoon of orange zest. And what orange zest is, is actually tiny little tidbits, little pieces of the actual orange peel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place this into my mixing bowl. And after I do that, I'm going to show you how I obtain that orange peel. Um, to obtain an orange zest, you're going to go ahead and take your orange. Um, the peel side goes against the, the grater. Hold the grater down firmly with your hand, and you're just going to go ahead and slightly run the peel up and down on the grating side of this grater. Uh, the side that we're using right now is the side that kind of feels the sharpest when, you know, to the point when you touch it with your finger, it's kind of sharp, so you got to be careful. Um, and a lot of that zest is going to be on the inside of the zester. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you what comes out of that. Um, and it sort of looks like this. Okay, next I'm going to add my one tablespoon of previously chopped um, fresh cilantro. A half of a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, one teaspoon of white vinegar. One full tablespoon of freshly squeezed orange juice, which I'm going to go ahead and use that same orange that I took the zest off of to get a whole tablespoon of fresh orange juice. You should actually probably do this over a bowl or another surface so that orange juice doesn't slip into your mixing bowl before you measure it out. Okay, I'm just about at a tablespoon. Okay, one tablespoon goes in. And last but not least, your garlic. You need three cloves of garlic for this, and we're going to go ahead and put this garlic through a garlic press, which just easily kind of smashes these garlic cloves up. And you can see it comes out the other side, and you can push that right into your bowl. That's one down, two to go. And then close it, press it. Last but not least, my third one. Okay, and that is my marinade. Next, you can go ahead and just give it a little, a little mixture with your spoon. Okay. 
after your marinade is nice and mixed, you're going to go ahead and separate this into two separate bags. Now I'm going to grab my 24 hour marinade bag and my bag that has simply your period number and your bin number on it. So half of the mixture is going to go in the bag with just your period number and bin number. Okay, and you can go ahead and close that off because it's going to go in the fridge in just a minute here. Okay, and the other half is going to go into your bag that is labeled 24 hour marinade. And what this is going to do is sit in this marinade mixture. The meat and the marinade are going to sit together in the fridge overnight and this meat is going to absorb all this nice marinade for tenderness and for flavor. Okay. And all three of these bags can be placed in one big bag, label it with your period and bin number, and it can be placed in the Alright, here we are, it's 24 hours later, and your teacher is ready to prepare your 30 minute marinade. This is going to be about a half of an hour before you get to class. So, I have my bag here, my period two bin threes bag um, with no meat in it, and I'm going to go ahead and add this marinade mixture to my bag that is labeled 30 minutes. This meat, again, has no marinade in it yet. It's only going to sit for a half hour. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. Toss my bag out. Close it up. Give it a little shake around. Make sure it's closed. Okay. And when you come a half hour later, you are going to grab two bags out of the refrigerator now. One says 24 hour marinade, the other says 30 minutes. And we're going to go ahead and conduct the experiment to see what the difference is between the two bags. Okay, 24 hours has passed and now you are ready to conduct your experiment. Um, one bag has your 24 hour marinade in it and the other, your teacher has previously just combined the marinade and the meat into the 30 minute bag. Um, please remember to be filling out your chart as you are conducting this experiment because you have a few things to compare and contrast. The first thing that you are going to compare and contrast is the color, texture, the overall appearance of the meat. Um, this is your 30 minute marinade. This is your 24 hour marinade. As you can tell already, there is a slight difference in color, a little bit difference in texture, and in a couple of minutes you're going to go ahead and um, tell the difference in flavor. Okay, we're moving on with our experiment. Uh, we just took a look at the appearance of the meat before it is cooked, and now we are actually cooking the meat on top of our skillet, which has a small amount of oil in there. Um, I'm cooking this about at about a medium heat right now. This is my 24 hour marinade. And I'm going to go ahead and let this cook until I see no more paint. Um, you don't want any pink parts on the meat, or else that means that it's not cooked fully and you are in danger of getting E. coli. And we will be back in a minute as this meat is fully cooked. Alright, we're back, and this is our 30 minute marinade that I have just taken out of the bag and put onto my skillet with oil in it. Um, it should cook, you know, within the next couple of minutes here until there is absolutely no pink. And then when we are back, we can compare and contrast the 24 hour marinade to the 30 minute marinade. Alright, and we're back. We have just finished um, cooking our 24-hour marinade meat and our 30-minute marinade meat on our skillet. Um, you're going to go ahead and taste these, kind of take a look at them, examine them, um, and see the difference between the two. There should be a slight, slightly different taste, slightly different texture, um, but I'm going to leave that up to you to decide for your experiment. Enjoy.